Welcome to Get Big Out Loud Radio, where we explore living the complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with me, Carrie Knutson, and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are your thoughts keeping you small? Are you ready to get big? I will offer you ideas to transform what you are thinking into conscious action. Explore what is keeping you small and how to shift your behaviors in order to get big. Learn what is possible for you. Get ready to get big and live life out loud starting now. Oh my goodness. Uh Oh, I just got to say like, oh, okay. Is everybody ready? Because I know y'all are feeling it. The tipping point. Uh, Some people call it the tipping point. Some people call it the tripping point. I don't care what you call it. There is a momentum that happens this time of year, but there's something about this year in particular. Today, this is Carrie Knudsen. Great show. And look, for those of you that don't know Carrie, I want you to I want you to know that this is somebody that takes psychology and puts it into use every day. She takes it off the couch. She does this by her keynote speaking, by the shows we do coaching, oh, amazing coaching platform. And besides all of that, she is an emotional intelligence expert. And I'm telling you right now, when you go look for a coach, I just want to tell everybody, make sure you're looking for people that understand the modulation of emotions, but also to know and understand that they each have a place. That's what that's what Carrie does. Today's show, I'm exhausted already. Tipping point, right? <laughs> what a setup, Dr. Pat. Wow, you've taken us through the all <laughs> of the holiday season and of me. Hearing someone else talk about me is so funny because they're like, wow, that's true and that's true. Thanks for the thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, the reason I wanted to talk today in our show about the tipping point is I know that this time of year causes a lot of anxiety for people. Also, there's um, anticipation and dreams and hopes that come along with it. And there's celebrations and activities and things that not everyone celebrates and not everyone's part of, but then there's the societal pressure. So I wanted to talk about the tipping point of like, when does it, when does this anticipation go to anxiety? And when do the hopes we have turn into things that were like, oh, that didn't work out and now I'm resentful of it or what, whatever is on the other side of the tipping point. And I thought it was really important for listeners to think about because we're in it right now, especially if you live in the United States of America, this is what we're dealing with. The holiday season starting with Thanksgiving through New Year's is full of a lot of things. Uh, and when we think about why the, I call it the tipping point too is we, it's going to happen every year, but sometimes it's the anticipation and the start of it now and the tipping point is as we get closer to yeah like christmas it, it is a lot for people so it's a lot for me so i wanted to talk about it too i i want to talk about it because i think there are parts of it can you answer this question i think there are pieces of it that we have control and can manage and I, those are the things i made a request today i said look it's my birthday today can we do something interesting can we try to, to hold ourselves back from complaining. And, you know, complaining comes in a lot of different ways, right? Can we speak only kind, gentle, uplifting words? You know, can we do that? And, you know, that sounds so easy to do, but on a day where you go home, it's rained here where I am, you already have a condition going on with the next door and you go home and your basement's flooded. And I don't know how you say kind, but the point, that's not the point. The point is what you teach, emotional intelligence. And that's the point that we have to look at today. But beyond all that, I got to tell you, sometimes we reach that tipping point. So let's talk about the tipping point, because I think there are a lot of people right on the edge of that, right? Yeah, I think that's this time of year kind of brings that up. And and a lot of it is with the expectation. And even like, by the way, happy birthday. Then Thank you. Like your birthday, you probably have a lot of expectations. What's going to happen on my birthday? Do I care? Do I not? If someone honors it or not? And am I, well, I think too, like, do I need someone to recognize my birthday or not? Like it's, and then how do I want to recognize it? And so sometimes the anticipation of those things, like you're a good example of today, what's your birthday going to be like for your expectation versus what's going to happen? And then how you manage that, even your requests 
course, going to happen, like what you can control and what you can't. And yeah. so the reason, again, to bring this up is I want to start thinking about how our expectations need to be countered with the reality check of what we can and can't do and what's in and out of our control so that we don't take the roller coaster ride yeah. of our emotions through I, I anticipated this and I dreamt about that and I hope for this and then you know this is this is kind of how I like to think about it and, and in a simple way how our brains work but if you tell me like hey Carrie tonight we're gonna go have Indian food and my husband says to me tonight's Indian food night all day I'm thinking about Indian food I can't wait I don't gonna order I'm thinking about it and I think about the naan and I'm gonna have ah masala like what am I gonna have right and then let's say he comes home and he's like you know I thought tacos may be better and I'm like I get mad like no yeah <laughs> oh my gosh you I'm right there with you tacos to my face right now like you know and I get really like viscerally angry about it because in my mind I've made a plan and have an expectation and then I had a set of ideas about how it was going to turn out and then I already felt the, the happiness of the activity happening. And I knew what I was going to expect. And has that ever happened in your life? Like you're going along with all those things and someone oh. like, the permit, like it says tacos. And you're like, it makes you react in a way that normally, if you were in normal land and you said you have some choices, you'd be like, oh, tacos or Indian food. But it's the expectation that sets you up. And we do this in our life all the time. We set up these expectations. So really the choices don't have, a different weight. It's like, what food do you want to eat? But when you put the expectation <laughs> of what you're going to do and where you're going to go and how it's going to be, then it seems like all right, big yeah. difference. Yeah. So, but the other thing that you mentioned, I want to talk to this because this ties right in everybody. Oh my gosh. I didn't know we were going to go here. All right. Not only was that an expectation, however, it was a promise now, when you take an expectation and you elevate it to a promise, I don't have time to go over my research, but I am going to tell you in short terms what happens with that. Trust gets violated. There's a level of, there's so many negative attributes of breaking promises. There's not enough time, but just something that's simple yes. can really it's, set you up. Look, I have to apologize. I went off on Linda at the Costco. Oh no. I did. Linda is Pat's best friend. My best friend. <laughs> and now, I mean, ridiculous. And I, I have, to, I haven't apologized officially yet. And I have to, but I went off for exactly the reason you see, I don't celebrate my birthday very much, but for this year, I wanted to, because there's something important, not about my birthday, but this time of year, this is a transition month. Mm -hmm. December, the energy, the new moon, and then into 24. So I don't usually, if you say birthday, I say what, who's what, but for some reason this year, and this year, my birthday number is a three. So when you look at 12, 11, 2023, 20, right? I can't explain it. But I went to the Costco and they had steak on sale. And I thought, wouldn't it be great for the three of us to get these beautiful steaks? I don't do it that often and cook them. So I said to Linda, Linda sees the steak in my cart. Okay, this is related to today, everybody. It really is. Watch. And I put the, got the steak. Linda's like, what's the steak for? I said, to have on my birthday. And Linda says something like, we already took you out for dinner for your birthday last week. And I, my reaction to that was so crazy. So let's go from there. Because even with all the tools I have, like Susan Denae would say, you got to know you're crazy. Go for it. Tell us your <laughs> holiday. What is it supposed it. to you're represent? Like, go ahead. Analyze this. Analyze this. Well, the interesting thing is it's such a perfect example. I'm so glad you brought it up. It's perfect because like, it's an innocuous situation. I brought steak. Right. You buying steak for dinner tonight is is level one. You're buying steak to do something special on your birthday, which you don't do to celebrate, to be recognized and to have fun with your friends and, and celebrate the day of and do something different. See how you leveled it up from to expectation. And then Linda says a simple thing like, what's the steak for? And in her mind, her story is, we already took you out to dinner. What do you want? What more do you want? Right. And you're like, happy birthday. Right. And then it becomes this personal thing. And you, and this is what I call parallel conversations. 
So like they're going, the topic is the same, but they're going along like this and they right. don't really intersect at all, except for in anger and, and except for in frustration because she's like, what did I do to offend you? And you're totally offended because you had the story about the steak and the dinner. And that's what I mean, our story <laughs> about what we tell ourselves, it, that's what gets us into trouble because the thing is just the thing. It has no meaning whatsoever. We make meaning out of everything. We make meaning like when, when my husband says, oh, I was thinking about tacos and I feel like you broke a promise and I expected that. And then I get all emotional about it. Right? And here's Linda being like, we are chicken dinner. And you're like, you don't think I'm a, you don't think you're a person <laughs> celebrating. Like notice like how we attach these things. And that's yeah. so important because when you think about like what happens to us in those moments, if we can notice that it's just our brain yeah. doing its thing. And and it's hard to be conscious in those moments because our feelings override our thinking. And at that moment, our feelings are speaking so loud and they're very intense and it's a visceral response. And so what I always say, when you have a visceral response, do not try to stop it in the moment because it's going to happen. Right. And, and, but as soon as you can, like now you're noticing what happened. And when you go back to talk to Linda, you'll be able to be like, I'm sorry for what happened. And I know what happened. I, 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 uh, I know what happened. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's good to say, I know what happened to me in that moment. Cause sometimes it helps other people to think about your thinking. Like that's when we call that metacognition thinking about your thinking is called metacognition. Right. So, but when you can tell someone, Hey, Linda, when you said this to me, we already celebrated your birthday. I know we did because I had an expectation about what the steak dinner meant and it's my actual birthday today and I'm actually here with my best friend and thinking it would be nice I made up a story about that and then that really hurt me and so yeah. when you, it's neutralizes it right because she didn't intentionally try to hurt you but she did yeah and, and, I, and I know what her answer is going to be too because you know Linda she's a triple Virgo well, it's a good thing you got them on sale. And it is a good thing I would have never bought them. But let's talk about the holiday and what it's supposed to represent. Because <laughs> you see, this this birthday for me, and if anybody that knows me knows, I, I don't generally do the B-Day. I don't. Because it's always been so close to Christmas. I almost do my own version of 14 days before Christmas. Okay, it's like 14. But I want to talk about what, what this is really and what's important. Now, I gave a silly example but I never told everybody here what I wanted to do today. Yes. See, so if I don't tell them and poor Jessica schedules things on my calendar. And then I say this morning, I really wanted this afternoon off. And, you know, you can hear them say, okay, why don't you wait till the last minute to tell us? Because I didn't really know. So let's talk about this. Sometimes we know and don't. Then Karen, yeah. look, Karen walks out of the door today and says, she's off for yoga tonight and says, what time are you having the steaks? Now, the last thing I wanted to do tonight, I'm a quadruple Sagittarius, is plan anything except play dominoes with Linda and this other crazy game sequence. So now let's talk about the holidays and what they're supposed to represent. And this goes for all y'all out there. It doesn't matter what holiday. Just say holiday. Go for it, Carrie. Tell us. This is paradoxical, isn't it? Yes, it is. But you're bringing up really good examples. I'm glad you're actually bringing up daily life examples versus like the big examples you might think of. Like what on Christmas Day, what's going to happen? But what, what you're saying right now is like my expectation for my birthday is this or I wanted to do this. Or I wanted to eat this. I want to be these people. And these simple things would make me happy. And then because then why'd you wait till last minute? Now it's too late. Whatever. Like <laughs> all of our stuff is happening in like a parallel universe, like what they're thinking and what you're thinking. And sometimes we really do have to think about maybe I didn't know what I wanted till the day came, or maybe you've been anticipating, you know, your birthday and then you couldn't articulate, it, but today is actually here. And sometimes the tipping point is the date or the time or the moment that arrives and things that like you might, you might've not felt anything today because today is your actual birthday. Right. And so then these things come up today because you're human and you're not a robot and we can't always plan our emotions or what we want, but you're in a situation to be kind of spontaneous. Right. And yeah. you thought, well, normally I don't want to do anything, but this year I do. Cause I'm maybe changing or different or this year's this year. Yeah. So you giving yourself permission, but what happens is we tend to like lock people into our expectations and then we yeah. lock ourselves into that. I guess I shouldn't be upset that 
nobody's excited to have a steak dinner with me on my birthday. I guess I should have planned an event. I guess I should have. And then you tell yourself that story. And again, if you can think about neutralizing, like this came up for me today, it was unexpected, but today's my actual birthday and I have some things I wanted. Right. Some of those I can, I can get, I can control and get those needs met and some things I can't. And I always think about this idea of like, if you think about the things you can control and then the intersection of the things that matter, that really matter to you. There's a very small intersection of the things you can control, the things that matter. Absolutely. So that idea is like for today, even can you focus on that intersection, the things that can actually control the things that matter, which might be saying, yeah, but I didn't plan my birthday in advance. Yeah. It's steak on sale. We got dominoes. My besties are in the house. Can we please spend some time together? Exactly. Exactly. Know, I love this. And because all of this is related, I'm going to stick with what you said, because this is the tipping point, everybody. This is the tipping point. She, Carrie doesn't even know she said it yet, but this is the tipping point. I remember an exercise I was given. I can't remember what year. Don't ask me. But it was about those very narrow things, that intersection. You call them narrow, right? I think I can't remember your term, but it's a little teeny bit that you can control, correct? Yes, can it's can intersection I, okay. of the things you can control and the things That's that right. matter. Okay. That intersection. All right. When we ruminate, isn't that a fancy word? <laughs> All of us do it. The thinking and thinking and thinking. I'm a okay. master. Ruminate. Uh, I, if I we just exhausting, ruminating, imagine this. And if you don't believe me, try this experiment. Stop up your sink, but make sure it has an overflow or your tub. I don't care what you do, but don't call me because you flooded your bathroom. <laughs> Monitor it or have it with the overflow and have water drip one drop at a time for 12 hours. When you come back, let Carrie know what you find because it's the drip, drip, drip of unmanaged expectations removing the idea of celebrating that thing which is a holiday not planning planning too much and then most importantly hello people we are emotional beings and we have lost ones let's let's talk about grief and loss because nobody wants to talk about grief and loss about the holidays no but and it's there it's there and it's for there for all of us and even if you say though for your example today my idea what was going to happen and didn't that that's a loss right and like when you think about our expectations that don't get met, those are losses. And we have to process these ideas. And part of it is when I don't like when people say, well, then set lower expectations and you won't get hurt. And oh, I, I think who says that? So who says that? Belittling people, people, <laughs> no, let's say the proverbial people, but sometimes people like keep your expectations low. And I think that's a really negative Mm. viewpoint and instead of like, like what are my expectations of myself of the situation but I think being realistic doesn't mean you don't have expectations and part of the expectation might be like I might not get my expectations met but I'm going to try or I'm going to articulate what I need or when you feel around too like what you didn't get like acknowledging that as a loss like I'm sad it didn't go my way that really didn't go how I thought or I'm 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 disappointed. Like owning that instead of being like, I should be disappointed. I shouldn't be mad. Like letting your body go through its cycle of like, yeah, that was disappointing. I'm bummed it didn't happen. Um, and there are different certainly levels of those expectations that we mm -hmm. get disappointed about. But part of like loss and disappointment, I feel like we, it has to be huge if you're going to mm -hmm. have a reason to have it. Mm -hmm. It has to be so big. And it has me, to be. And you, it could just be like, like, I think there's varying levels of, but it gets okay to be like, I didn't get what I wanted. It's a bummer. I'm bummed about it. Like, I wish it would have happened a different way. And so you can almost reality test what's going on instead of living. Why am I so yeah. angry? Why am I so like, imagine if you didn't think about what happened today with you and Linda and you tried to go into tonight and have a good night and you have that residual anger at her, at you, at the stake, at like what your birthday is supposed to mean, instead of just thinking it through, like what yeah. happened? in in a more objective way and then thinking the things that you lost that you in your expectations and the things you can control and feeling like it's okay that you're disappointed because sometimes we don't even allow ourselves to be disappointed because we like should look on the bright side or think of the silver lining or aren't you happy you just celebrating another birthday or they did take you out to dinner so what's the big deal or like like for me and my taco versus Indian food, like <laughs> you still get to go to dinner with your husband. What's the big deal? Right. Like, <laughs> so 
you know, I just think these little things are actually sometimes more important than the the bigger things because if yeah. we can recognize in our lives how we set this up, because we set up these expectations and I think it impacts our relationships with other people. It also impacts our ability to know like, why was that hard for me? What's coming up for me? Right exactly. Now? All right. All right. Let's talk about this point right here. Now you brought it up. You're going to get me all emotional. But look, this is not about, this is not my birthday show, everybody. I want to tell you, this really fits any shoe. It really does. Any time that, especially these times of the year, I'm just going to say it. And believe me, for some of you, it started like the Thanksgiving. I know it did because you've already called me. Like Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, you didn't get the tree. And it was like, oh my gosh, something horrible happened. Okay, so you got the tree on the Sunday, but you didn't get it on Friday. You always get the tree on Friday on Thanksgiving, but you didn't. But you didn't tell your family why you couldn't get the tree. Hello, and your intentions were great because you had to go pick something very special up from a special like place, like a like a the mail place, because it was this very special gift for Christmas and it was sitting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, all of that, all of those oh. things mixed with, Oh, oh, and then am I getting the socks again? But Carrie, <laughs> here's what's underneath this for me. And I want you to take with this and run with this because this is this is so much part of it. What I realized, and I haven't been able to articulate it yet, because I didn't get I didn't get it till this morning. We had a very beautiful day yesterday. We saw the most incredible choir. It was just great. But what I realized about that snap at you moment uh, on Friday was it wasn't really about the steak. It was about the fact that we almost lost Linda in May. May 19th, I got here. And May 20th, Mary Jane Mack and a bunch of other people, Darvish, Doc Martin, they weren't sure she was going to be living the next day. That's how ill she was. But I didn't explain that that Linda and I have spent my birthday together for most of the time I've known her. So it wasn't really about my birthday, you see? Mm -hmm. For me, it was, I get to have my birthday with my best friend that did not die. Yes, but do you see what you said that's so perfect? It's hardly ever what it is. The steak isn't about the steak. The birthday isn't the birthday. The tree isn't the tree. The dinner isn't the dinner, whatever. The the expectations that we set around them, right? And like, what? It, but it's hard for us to say like, my birthday's extra special this year because you didn't die and I want to make sure we're together, right? And I want to have a steak dinner on my day because it's on sale and why not? And maybe I changed my mind about my birthday this year because I'm really thinking about my age, our friendship, time passing, whatever. Yeah. And so the ability though to say that, Dr. Pat, it's not oh. the thing. Very rarely is the thing the thing. Like when you look in your life, it's it's really a good exercise sometimes, especially I like to do this looking back because I think it's easier to look back than in the present moment. But many of us can look back and like find a situation where you felt like you overreacted or or you had a hard time or something, it's easy to look back and think like, oh, this is what was really going on for me. So then you can look back and say to yourself, oh my God, this, and, and I'll give you a quick little story for me that I didn't- Please, please. Together. But I, um, my dad had passed away and his birthday is as December 24th. And the year he passed, it was in September that he died. But as we got closer to December, I was feeling like angry at the holidays. I, I literally was like, people put their lights up already. What's up with this? It's like, and Joe's like, well, it's December. So like, you know, people get to put their lights up. And then, then, then my daughter's sang in a holiday concert and I didn't, um, feel like they did a good job or something. I felt like <laughs> angry. I felt angry at the concert. Wasn't like as nice as I thought. And then, um, I was mad around something like, um, I got some cards in the mail from friends. And I, and again, my primary emotion is anger. Okay. But I'm like, why are these people sending things out so early? Like why? And Joe's like, well, cause it's December. Why do you keep saying it's December? These are things people do in December, but I didn't, the thing wasn't the thing, right? My anger was so displaced. Cause I'm like, how come my dad doesn't get a birthday this year? Cause he died, but my brain had not put things yeah. together. So I'm like angry at December for getting here because exactly. the, to the 24th, but I was angry at everything 
everything because I couldn't say I'm grieving my dad and it's really hard. Plus, I know it's Christmas, so I should be happy. But this is really hard for me. But I was displacing my anger at everything. Like I literally was angry because some package I ordered was a day late. And I thought like, why can't even the postal service get it together? No one cares that like whatever. I was, I was just, you could like, I don't know, the, my towel wasn't hung up correctly and I felt angry or like the lights didn't work right. Or one of our ornaments broke and I cried because we had this moose ornament in the part of the top of it broke off and I was like mad that my kids weren't being sensitive about the moose tournament but I could really now looking back I can see every time my anger was displaced in a moment because it was easier to put my anger there mm -hmm. than to put my anger at like my dad's not here and I'm angry that he died right so notice how my brain was like okay we'll get rid of this anger a little bit at a time we'll displace it until you can articulate what is actually going on for you which was that like and, and it, this is the interesting thing that it, my husband was so helpful because I was like, I don't, I can't even get the Christmas card sent out this year and I can't do it. And he's like, maybe this is your year we don't send out the Christmas card. And yep. I'm like, we have to send out the Christmas card. Nobody yep. doesn't send out their Christmas And I went into this huge thing, but him just staying with me and letting me cry. And I just spiraled out about the Christmas cards. And in the end, I was like, I'm so sad my dad died. <laughs> like, I just said it like that. And and it kind of clarified everything I had been doing the whole month. And almost permission to not send out the Christmas cards that year was permission to grieve my dad and, like, have have bigger things on my mind. And it, but it, that now looking back, I can I can replay that whole thing really easily. I could not do it in the moment because I was just responding to my emotions that weren't really being processed. And that's why I encourage people do to do sometimes to get to know yourself better. Look back at a situation that is over. Look at the, like how triggered you got, look at how high your emotions were. Look where you maybe displaced some things. Look what you were trying to achieve, but how it might've gotten misguided. Look at where those parallel conversations happened. Look when people were like, are you okay? <laughs> but like, and then you can do it. It's more neutral if you look back. And then once you can collect that data, that's what I like to do now, carry the data forward into the present moment and think, how do I normally respond? I know I respond, I get mad. My primary indicator that something's gone with me is anger, but it is usually displaced. And that is a great thing that I know about me. And you might think for you, okay, what is my, what is my thing? Oh, we could talk about me when we get back and we're going to leave this for our, our, our listeners. Hey, when we come back, we're taking your calls. Anything we can help you with today, 1-800-930-2819. When we come back, we're going to take you through an important list. Uh, Carrie put this list together, but we're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so literally telling some stories. It's pretty funny stuff too. Uh, expectations we've talked about control finances people are you already planning to get sick for the holidays please i had somebody say that to me they're like i don't know how to not i don't know how to get out of going i feel sick now i said you got two weeks what do you mean you feel sick now <laughs> uh and be careful what you wish for people time we're gonna talk about time emotions connections when we come back this is the wheel. This is the what I call for Carrie, the tipping point wheel of the holidays. When we come back, we're going to help you with each of them. You're listening to Get Big Out Loud, Carrie Knutson. Carrie, tell everybody before we go to break how they find out about you, but also talk a little bit about how you help people become great speakers. Yeah, so I do a lot of things in my business. KnutsonSpeaks.com is where you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and my website. It's all under Knutson Speaks. And what I love about the work that I do is taking psychology, like we say, off the couch. You tend to think about going to a therapist and sitting on the couch. And I like to say, let's take it off the couch. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in ways that help us. So I do that through presentations, through coaching, and, and also through small group coaching and individual coaching. And then I think that the world needs better speakers on whatever you're passionate about. So I started coaching people on speaking because I speak so much. I really felt the drive to think about how we can show up to speaking in more confident ways. And I, again, I think there's room for all of us to speak. The world needs better speakers. So that's part of my coaching practice is to help people who want to be better speakers to, to find their voice and to help them get on their path.
Yeah. And I want to say this about Carrie, too. Part of speaking is communicating. And you heard her just walk me. She and I just went through this because although this was Friday, the thing that happened where I was totally out of line with my best friend, it took me time and I didn't get it till we were at the choir, choir, beautiful choir, orchestra version of Ave Maria. And I got a text message from a friend of mine that said, you actually went in the Catholic church. Did it come down on top of your head? But that's another story for another show. So I want you all to think about this. I didn't get it till yesterday. And I'm trying to prepare my amends. When we come back, expectations, control, finances, people, and the serenity perk. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. everybody fasten your seatbelts 1-800-930-2819 for those of you that want some help you're getting ready to crank it up and roll in all right if you're like me you're rolling in you're rolling into the holiday i want to tell you a couple things carrie too and then we're going to talk about the list that we have to make everybody aware of what to be aware of why this holiday why has this holiday in a sense what is it about this year, this holiday that just popped up for me? Okay, here's what it is. Quickly, 2022 was still a year of, I don't know what to expect. Do we wear a mask? Do we don't wear a mask? La, 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 la. 2023, it, it sort of, we're rolling right along. However, however, there's still that lurking, what do we do not do? But we don't have as much. 2024, for the people that I speak with, there is an expectation, planetary, Neptune, not a retro, mega year, mega positive. I know that's what I'm thinking. But you have a list, and I want to go back over these. How Everybody write this down, because these are the key areas that will, I, I'm telling you, it, th th this stuff, this is like a pimple that will not go away. <laughs> Expectations, control, finances, people, time, emotions, connections. Okay, let's go, Carrie. These oh. are the uh, dirty dozen. They're not a dozen, but right. they're pretty well, dirty. Well, because I put this list together because I think, what is, I call it like when you think about our um, anticipation and how the tipping point can then become anxiety or disappointment, like the tipping, like our anticipation usually causes that. And what are the main areas it comes up? And for me and for many other people, cause we're human, the very first thing is our expectations. Like how can we be realistic while still hoping? I disagree with like, don't have expectations, don't make them too high. You're going to get disappointed. I don't like that thinking, but I do like being realistic about your expectations and thinking like, what is realistic for me today? And what is realistic for this holiday situation? What is realistic for what I'm going to do tonight? Like trying to be realistic to think, to give yourself some wiggle room that it doesn't have to be perfect to be really, really good, that it doesn't have to like all, and sometimes spontaneity is actually better than something that's planned. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it's going to work out in the moment. And later you're like, oh, that was actually great. Or like in your situation, the lesson you got from this is going to be priceless in your relationship oh. with Linda. It's going to be oh. priceless, right? The awareness. So sometimes the gift is awareness later, but that's what I think about like managing your expectations so that you can show up so I'm going to try to manage my expectations to be realistic while still having hope. So I think that's a fine line, but I think that's the first thing on my list. And then the idea is like what you can control and what you can't. And again, the intersection of what you can control and what's important to you is very small. And sometimes you can only control your thoughts. Sometimes you can only control what you put in your mouth. Sometimes you can only control how much, let's say, um, you feel like you, you have to spend endless amounts of like um, money or time or something. Somebody's just like, well, what can I actually control around that? Like I, and even the idea, like I do have control over some things and deciding what I do have control over and what I don't. And sometimes it's a good lesson, like, like an exercise. List the things I have control over. It might be, do I, do I scroll before I go to sleep? And like, what do I put in my head at night? It might be, do I floss? Like, is that how many feel like I'm taking care of myself? Whatever it is, like, what are the things I can control, right? And then from there, I do think around this time of year, but also with any kind of, when we're, when we're doing things, how much we spend 
is very to me like the expectations around it has to be the best ever and you should spend the most and then don't look at your credit card bill till later and the thing about sometimes having a boundary is saying this is how much i can spend on this this is how much i'm willing to do and then feeling confident and good not sorry for it yeah and managing expectations around like this is how what what can i get for this amount of money so that in january i don't have that sick feeling and yeah. remorseful feeling and like then, then I think about the holidays is just, I got to pay for it all in January now. And then yeah. be sad. Well, let me talk about this for a minute. Cause you're yeah. onto something that's underneath. It's like if anybody y'all out there that horseback ride, any of us that have ever done this and love to do it. Uh, I wasn't going to, I'm not going to use my skydiving analogy. Cause that's a little bit too horrific, but <laughs> any of you that ride, you know, what happens right when you ride and either it, the horse gets something under the saddle or in the hook, right? There is a level of behavior that have that operates from that. However, your intention is to get on that horse, you and the horse, you are one with the horse, and you're out in nature or you're on the beach, your hair flowing, not my hair, but your hair flowing, and this is what you imagine. So I wanna say this, when, you, when Carrie and I are talking today, we want you to reach for the stars. You see, dreaming isn't about practicality, nor is setting intentions. What we're talking about is expectations. That's a ball game. That's another ball game. And so when we talk about this, especially money, you have to understand when you need to hold them and when you, when you can fold them. You got it? You understand that? Fold them. And the reason that you look at these things is you must send, you must tell the universe, I have lofty expectations. No, you have lofty intentions. You have a dream, mm -hmm. you see, but expectations, those are the things you can manage and control. You see what I'm saying about this, Carrie, because you it. may look at something. I looked at, I had an intention uh, for the bicycle, right? But I didn't want to spend it. So we're driving down the road here on 22 and oh, free bicycle, right? This is what I want to say. Let's keep rolling because finances, don't well, let your finances it, it, rule it, you. And yeah. and expectations. That's a great yeah. distinction. That's a beautiful distinction. And again, that's someone who's really thinking and not just our unconscious mind taking over. Like, like how we have to do it. And that's the, the the part about finances that I'll say is like, a lot of us feel like the more I spend, the more I'm loving or the better it will be. And then you'll appreciate it. And then if someone doesn't appreciate it, oh. then we feel like you should, do you know how much money I spend on that? You should appreciate it more. So, so do you see how we're, we're putting our expectation on that gift or on that um, moment? And mm -hmm. I think that's really important when you, especially when you're spending money over these over this time like even like thinking about how much money you might spend on putting a dinner for your friends together or doing something and then should they then thank you profusely or say that it was perfect or then <laughs> what if you burn some of it or whatever like so being realistic in those moments so that you can the goal is not actually to spend the money the goal is to give a token of something that says i thought about you um or this is or like the steak the steak is steak but it's a special meat. You don't have it that often. You're going to cook it up and you've, you've given it meaning and we give all the things meaning, but some of us give spending more money, meaning that it doesn't have. Oh, right. Exactly. When people just want time. Like yeah. what you were saying to me was so beautiful. Like what if you had your steak dinner and played dominoes with your friends? And it was like, yeah, that's what you want is time. You, you would probably have leftover Chinese food takeout and it yeah. was not a steak, right? You want to make the steak because it would be nice and it was on sale and it had all this meaning, but really you want time with your friends to honor. It's your birthday and you, you've seen because your best friend almost died, what a birthday means. And you've seen what special things, so you're, you're infusing all this into that. But if you can't articulate it, it's hard to be mm. like, why am I so answer about my birthday? What are <laughs> you see how it just gets elevated. It does. It's hard for us to stay in those moments of like, this is what it means to me. Yeah. Like this is this is after I take all the other things away, the core of it may be connection, time, exactly uh, honoring somebody, whatever it is. Like you, then that's what's so beautiful. If you can get to the core of it, it's hard in the moment, and sometimes it takes us days or weeks to process it. Like now, I look back a few things. Christmas is ago, I'm like, oh, 
look what I was doing there, just <laughs> all my grief, right? And I can see it so easily, but in the moment, sometimes it's hard for us to see our own actions. Yeah. It can be very, we can't see ourselves sometimes in those moments. And that's why it's so great to be able to look back and then take those lessons into the present. And yeah. to, like, you're going to make those repairs tonight in those relationships, which I bet will be stronger for it. And I have to say too, I, I'm, with my situation, my husband and him, like um, changing the plans all the time. He sometimes will be like, I'm thinking about changing our plan. And I know you need a little more time to think about the change. So I'm going to text you at lunch and then talk about dinner. Hours. Like he knows it gets me. So it's totally kind of gets you. We've made it a funny thing now rather than a like, but he knows it. Right. And so we make progress in our relationships. We make progress in our communication. We make progress for ourselves. Cause I'll even say to myself, Oh, I'm doing that thing. I do again around expectations. And doing that thing I do. And then I catch myself before I just let the train go out of the station. And I exactly. Die. And you just pop off. And, you know, I love this because I'm realizing how similar uh, you and Linda are in your processing, because you're right about that. There, there are some people that look adapting to change, whatever you want to call it. This brings us to people and time. Here's yeah. what we're going to talk about now. There yes. are people in your lives. Everybody just want to tell you. Now, Let's just be clear and Carrie, Carrie, take this away. I am not telling anybody here to be around people that you do not want to be around for whatever personal reasons you don't want to be around them or if they've done harm. That is not what we're saying. But you have to manage the sphere of influence around people in the holiday. And time is important because a half hour with somebody that you're not really too fond of is very different than a half a day and dinner and dessert. Let's talk about people. Yes, and time. Well, time and people. So we brought up people because people can be really triggering, especially around this time of year. There's some people that we never see except for the holidays, right? <laughs> people that we only see for special events. Some people, there's a reason we don't hang out with them very often because it's hard. But then the holidays kind of shove everyone together or these expectations like be with family. What if you don't? have a family to go back to? What if you don't particularly like your family? What if you like them, but you don't really get along or you're going to pray? What if there's certain family members that are great and others that are not? And then when you're in a group dynamic, there's stress. So you have to think about yourself before you show up. I was like, what's my expectation around how much time I can spend in this environment and have it work? And it's always, I think about a give and take around like you, I think part of our promises to each other or some of the obligations that we keep, even though it might not be fun or the best or whatever. Like, but I think sometimes we have to say to ourselves, what's my limit? What's my, what's reasonable for me to do this thing I'm going to do and still take care of myself. Yeah. And what does that look like for the people? And sometimes if you think about like, oh, I can't control who's going to be here. Can I spend how long I stay? Can I control what topics I will and won't engage with? And, and set a firm yet kind boundary. Like I'm not talking about that because I know it won't lead to a great conversation. Anyway, I was thinking about this, like, like, yeah. be, like because you know, but you think about that ahead of time so that you don't have to take the toll and you're not thinking like, this dinner's going to be horrible. I can't, I can't handle it. Like <laughs> when's it going to be over? And then you tell yourself a story how horrible it's going to be. And then the universe says, do you want a horrible? I'll show you horrible, right? So we have to think about limits with people and limits with time that makes sense to us. And, and some of us will say, like, I'll even say, like, I have certain obligations that I know each holiday will have to happen. So within the realm of my obligations to these, to my family and friends, what can I do around my limits, too, that yeah. keep me from feeling overwhelmed or, or mad at everything or just so frustrated about it all? Like, and that's, those are questions we have to sit with and think about because it, it will look different for each of us. But these yeah. are major things that come up, people and time, money. Now, these are triggers essentially during this time that we have to sit with a bit and think, what is, yeah. what do I want to, what do I want to make out of this? That, so there's so what's going on here. Like what's going on? Like mm -hmm. what's happening? Okay. So this brings me to emotions and connections. It's all really related. It's fascinating because I don't know, this choir thing just opened my brain, this level of Kundalini something up here yesterday. And I thought about this and I realized that I am not telling I'm not speaking what it is I desire. Here's a perfect example, y'all out there. I'm willing to share this with you, but I want to tell you this communication around the holidays, Carrie, right? 
just like your husband. Oh, I got to love him already. But it's so important. So I didn't communicate to my best friend. My best Linda is coming back uh, with us. She's going to help us with our launch and so many other things. I just, I just need her around this year. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you just need her around. And I also have a group of about 30 friends and they haven't done a white elephant. So they had the white elephant this year. I lost sight of when the white elephant was. So in my brain, I thought, oh my God, get back here. Linda and I could go to the white elephant. Mind you, I never asked Linda if she wanted to go to the white elephant. But in the scheme of things, the time, the white elephant idea left my brain. And it was more important to make it easy on us both coming back. So I, I got the tickets, but the tickets are for Saturday. will not be here in time for the white elephant. And the point that I'm making to everybody here is emotionally, you've got to be willing to compromise. Now, I don't use the word compromise very often. I, I love win-win, but there are some times during this holiday season that you're not going to want to go to, to have Aunt Mary's very acidic spaghetti gravy, but you may have to compromise. So can we talk about that? Because yes. it's too late for me to change. I'm not even going to ask Linda about it because it's very inappropriate. But the point is no communication. If I'd have communicated, Linda would have chimed in. Linda's a master problem solver like you. But sometimes you just got to go with the flow. Talk to yes. that. And compromise is so important for ourselves. Like we can't have everything all the time. And being instead of seeing <laughs> it as a failure, you're seeing it as a compromise. I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to do this. Or I often say, this is my priority right now. And I can't have 14 priorities. So something's got to come in second, third, fourth, and fifth. And but talking to yourself that way and being like, well, this year, this is what's going to happen. Or this year, this is how it's going to go. Or my priority shifted because of things going on in my life. Or how my schedule was, but I think it's okay to let yourself think about that, right? Like it, it didn't happen this way because I have different priorities. And, but it, when those priorities compete or we always do it this way and this always happens and, or I'm looking forward to introducing Linda to my friends and then oh, this white elephant, it'll be so great and I'll love it. And again, <laughs> but now I'm missing it. And then I miss my friends and then you make up a story about it. And so again, you have to think about your emotions just kind of like, it's like the sleigh ride of emotions. Like, here we go. Like you're just going on a ride and, and it's okay. Cause our brains are wired to do that. And the people who can use their brains and think, Oh, look what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll even say, you're doing that thing that you do again. And it could be <laughs> anything. It could be around anything, but it was so, I think it's so important because our emotions tend to get displaced when we're not aware of them because you have competing things going on right now and you cannot have the same priorities you've had in the past because your life is different. But it's hard for us to say, oh, my life's different right now. And it's my priorities have shifted because our mind is like, no, do what you've always done the way you've always done it. I like it that way. And it and that, notice how we don't say it's not the holidays if we don't do this. It's not the holidays if we don't do that. Or it's not this special thing if we don't do that. Sometimes we can't do those things. And it doesn't mean we're then bad or awful or it's it's not the same. It's just different. And and I think I, acknowledging that, and, I, and I'm saying everything I need to hear too, because I think as humans, we, we are, our brains are wired that we just tend to struggle with this because we want it to be like it's always been. Yeah. And so if something changes, if someone's not there, if something's different, um, it, it changes how the meaning for us. And what the, the lesson is, is can it still have be meaningful if it's not the same? Can we find meaning in other ways? Excellent. Can I, can I just save some space for that? And and can I save the space for it might be enough? And I might have wished for this and hoped for this, but maybe this is enough. Or maybe this is what I needed. I just didn't know it yet. Or maybe I'm frustrated about it because it wasn't what I wanted. And I'm going to move on. Like, you, there's so many choices we have. And that's the crux of what I want to get to today is we act sometimes like we don't have choices and we absolutely do. Even if it's just how we choose to think about something. And that is the key part of this whole conversation today is, you know, when you're getting to the tipping point and the only thing that can kind of bring you back is the power of your mind, your conscious thinking, allowing, like in your case to bubble up, like what happened over these past few days and what's the core of it. And like, for me seeing progress 
from five years ago when my dad died and to now when I'm like have strategies and coping skills and different ways to think about the holidays and I can still grieve my dad and still miss him terribly on his birthday and still celebrate Christmas. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it for a while. <laughs> and so now I'm seeing, I'm looking back to, to get perspective to help me in the present. And the point is we both made progress in our lives, but it's so we're, we're all looking yeah. to what's next and what's happening right now that it's hard to even appreciate. So I just want you for your thing that you brought up, Dr. Pat, don't lose the beauty of the lesson because you're on to the next thing and leaving on side, like, like take this moment, like, wow, this was really a lot. Right. And I learned something from it and I'm going to take the lesson with me and I'm not going to just bypass it because that's the beauty of growth. What you talked about today is so beautiful. That's the beauty of the human condition and that's growth. And I want to thank you for this because look, we're going into a holiday season and it's called holiday for a reason. Carrie, Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Carrie puts so much preparation into these shows and these messages. And this is what she does with the people and the clients that she works with. She's speaking. You can find out where she speaks, KnutsonSpeaks.com. But more importantly, listen to some of the past shows. Because if you want to be uplifted and inspired, 2024, Carrie, is a year for action. Um, People say every year is a year for action. I think that's true, but I think it's the year for uplifting positive action. People are doing things, they're coming out of their shell. And I want to thank you for today to help us understand all of it. Um, last message, what would you like to leave us with today? I'd like to think about as we approach these next, you know, this next month, essentially for all of us, whatever you're celebrating. And I love that you brought up birthdays because I think that that's a typically thing like Thanksgiving and then Christmas or, or like Hanukkah if you're doing Hanukkah, or New Year's or whatever we're doing, like to keep some perspective on what you need, what you really need to get through this time with grace and that it doesn't have to be perfect. And that part of growth is recognizing when you're getting to the tipping point between your anticipation and then the anxiety that's going to, that's going to cause if you, if you continue to try to live in that expectation world and then try to, like, how can I expectation reality? Where, where did the two going to meet? And can I be easy on myself instead of judgmental? Can I be curious about what's going on for me? Can I take the lessons from the past and put them in the present? And can I sit with the fact that a lot of emotions might come up during this time that could get displaced and that it doesn't mean I'm broken. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. And that it may need, I need a little extra support. I need to spend a little bit of time focusing on myself. Or I need to think about the, again, the intersection, what matters, what I can control. Where's that sliver of the intersection and then focus your time on that and feel purposeful in that rather than frantic and failing and it's too much. I didn't do right, whatever, whatever story you're going to tell yourself. My goal is that you go confidently and competently and thoughtfully into this next month. I love it. Carrie Knutson, everybody, Knutson Speaks. I can't wait till we talk about 2024. It's going to be great. Okay, question, burning question. Did you have the tacos or the Indian food? You know, we went to tacos because there was a new place he passed on the way <laughs> and he really, really wanted to try it. And about half of the meal, I was mad and then I really enjoyed the new taco place. <laughs> and then, but I did say next time Indian or nothing else. And so yeah, I did acquiesce to the tacos after a big fit about it, by the way, you know, but then we had not a good night. I, I get it. I, I believe me. I, I totally get it. Well, I'm going to take some action. So we don't have a big fit over the steaks tonight. Thank you. Gary Knudsen, Emily, thank you so much. And to all of you, we're planning shows right up into next year. You've told us the things you wanted to talk about. Carrie nailed it. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you, Emily. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. You have been listening to Get Big Out Loud Radio, where we explore the complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with me, Carrie Knudsen, joining Dr. Pat live every second Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. I will help you to know which thoughts are keeping you small in order for you to get big. Get big and live your life out loud. For more information, visit KnutsonSpeaks.com.